Trenbolone, the monster steroid. That's the name of this video, and I'm producing this video because I see so much use of this drug, and I have to educate the world on what this drug is. There's no question that this is the absolute father, the mother of all steroids. This is such a massively powerful drug, and it can be absolutely devastating. So with that, let's start humbly with the scientific background. And first off, I see this drug being used more and more, not just for the strict bodybuilders and the pros, the way it used to be back in the 80s and 90s. Now it's being used recreationally, and I'm seeing the devastating effects. Scientifically, this drug is one of the nandrolone groups. It's very different, though, than the parent nandrolone drug. It's a NOR-19 drug, and that is true. There are three types of these ester pro drugs, and I'll discuss those scientifically, what they are with some background history. Trenbolone acetate, otherwise known as Finijact and Finiplex, and everyone knows the Finijact was the old school intermuscular injection, and then it transitioned in 1987 uh, to Finiplex pellets uh, for veterinarian use only. This medicine, uh, Trenbol and Acetate, was marketed only for veterinarian use. And it's interesting that in that turning point in the world, 1987, it, uh, Finijact, it appeared to, to come off the market uh, it was just for animals, of course, though. Uh, it was used for cattle, and they transitioned it just to the pellets that were, that were inserted, easily inserted without a veterinarian uh, there. So easily uh, given and administered by a cattle rancher. And why was this drug used? Very interesting. This drug will increase muscle mass massively and weight of these animals uh, that are to be brought to slaughter. That's what they're there for, right? We build these animals up to slaughter them to eat them and uh, it increase their appetite too so appetite calories it's called feed efficiency and it is very interesting this side note that you can imagine this toxic or this chemical this hormone this steroid is going to be in the body in the meat and they're in most places in the world I believe in America I would hope that there has to be a withholding period, you know, so it washes out, the drug washes out of the meat. Uh, apparently, based on studies, if you quickly bring the, the animal right to slaughter, there will be trace, if not more, uh, traces of this actual drug uh, in the meat. So kind of want some trend? I guess you can go to a place that has no washout period when they slaughter their animals, <clears throat> their cattle. That's trend bowl and acetate. Next, uh, Trenbolin ester pro drug is Trenbolin hexahydrobenzyl carbonate. And this is otherwise known as Parabolin and Hexabolin. Now, this is not in the market. It's been off the market for a long time. I never think thought it ever made it into the markets of America. And it was actually for human use and that was for cachexia, osteoporosis, and uh, severe muscle wasting uh, in humans, and it was only in France. And they actually took it off the market in 1997. Uh, now these, the Trenbolone hexahydrobenzyl carbonate and Trenbolone enanthate that I'll discuss now are called long-acting esters uh, versus the uh, Trenbolone acetate, which is a short-acting ester. Um, Trenbolone and Anthate is uh, never on the market at all marketed for medicinal purposes or for veterinary purposes. It was a slow-acting Trenbolone ester that was evaluated uh, by the scientists back in the 19, uh, late 60s and early 70s, and it actually came to market, or black market, if you will, in 2004 by uh, British Dragon, and that's famous history. Um, uh, Trenable. It was called Trenable. So, 
this medicine is anabolic androgenic steroid is massive massively strong it produces incredible muscle size and strength now <clears throat> let's talk about the side effects because the side effects are the inherent problem with this drug obviously so first side effects we talk about are estrogenic side effects or lack of estrogen side effects why because this medicine class is non-estrogenic steroid so it doesn't convert there's no aromatization going on but the incredible piece here is and i've seen this clinically it has an incredible affinity for the progesterone receptor and there's overlap with estrogen and progesterone receptors men will lactate men will absolutely pour out and lactate because of this drug and it has those effects now so conceptually using a aromatase inhibitor or a selective estrogen receptor modulator with this drug will not block gynecomastia effects or lactation effects um, and there will be no puffiness there'll be no bloat and water weight gain like dianabol anadrol or estrogenic steroids like testosterone it, it won't be like that that's why it gives that incredible grainy hard uh, effect and that's why it's used for that in cutting phases for sure with other drugs so the estrogenic effects Amazingly enough that I do see, despite being an aromatizable drug, men will use with these other blockers, aromatase inhibitors and selective estrogen receptor modulators. And they'll have an effect because on that receptor, it's not so clean. You'll get a blocking effect on the nipple cell site directly from the serums. And systemically across the body, you'll get a blocking effect with, with aromatase inhibition. In addition as well, because you have synergy in the body with progesterone and estrogen. So, and who's using Trend by itself? They're using with other drugs that are aromatizable. So you're getting this milieu of, of steroids and estrogenic conversion. So you can block the effects with the aromatase inhibitors and the selective estrogen receptor modulators at the same time because you're using a, a, a co-mix of drugs. So I found that to be amazing when you see the bro science and guys fighting each other. It's, you're a douchebag. It doesn't convert. It can't convert. Well, it doesn't have to convert because there's a mix on these receptors, people, of estrogen and progesterone. Not to mention there's a conversion, there's a synergy with other steroids. Whew. So estrogenic effects, androgenic effects. This drug is 300% stronger androgenically anabolically too than testosterone it's massive three times stronger than testosterone for androgen effects and so what are those side effects going to be hair loss acne male pattern balding boy this is something that you don't see women use and if they do they pay for it so this is again why you have that incredible muscle hardness now Interesting effect would be, so, drugs like 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, finasteride and dutasteride. They're not going to work because there's no 5-alpha reductase to the enzyme. It's, it doesn't move and, and mediate through that pathway. I thought that was interesting to bring up. Now, these androgenic side effects are the devastating side effects. Let's go right to sex. This is what's happening. Please listen to this. I have men, recreational men coming in, not to mention bodybuilders on different levels of novice, intermediate, and pro, and strong men, and, and powerlifters, and any man. They're using this drug because they get hypersexual. Who's not going to like that? On testosterone, on other steroids, or just trend by itself? It's not like, it cannot be like Decadec, Trendic. It's not that easy. Trendic is variable because this medicine will make you hypersexual. It gets into your central nervous system, to that limbic area. It gets into the area that makes a man sexual, and it makes him hypersexual. And then the bottom line is coming off from this drug is debilitating. I have men suicidal that they can't have sex. Even on, doc, I'm using testosterone, equipoise, other drugs. I'm checking my estrogen, my DHT. I'm doing everything. I'm not recovering, doctor. I'm not recovering. My sex won't come back. I'm working on this right now. 
I just got back from Florida and I saw two men out of six. So I have to bring this attention. This is such a massively suppressive drug on the, on, that causes anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism on that hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. You have to understand that. That's the worst side effect I think that there is of this drug. Next effects, equally as bad over the long term though, cardiovascular. This is a, this is a monster devastating drug to your lipid panel. HDL and LDL, HDL down, LDL up. This has direct endothelial effects in destabilizing that, that fragile, beautiful lifeline that you have called your endothelial tissue in the, in the inside your coronary artery, not to mention other arteries. This also directly causes LVH. This is the drug. If testosterone and other drugs can cause it to variable degrees, and cause muscle growth and muscle hypertrophy, this massively can cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Please pay attention to this. There are also side effects similarly I see in the prostate for men with this. That's more of the androgenic effects. Aggressive behavior. No one's going to tell me that roid rage is not true when it comes to trend. It seems like all the other steroids are okay. Roid rage, it's an asshole, it's an asshole on steroids, likely so, no one's gonna disagree. But when it comes down to trend, you're violent. A man this week, when I took my history and physical, he said, doctor, uh, frankly, I was violent. That's the word he used. That's roid rage. This drug is gonna cause it. Some men on testosterone and other steroids seem quite laid back and cool. Doesn't seem like anyone's quite laid back and cool on trend. Um, you're gonna sweat like crazy. Not sure anyone understands that. It's something to do with hypothalamus and triggering other effects on the thermal receptors. And then we have the renal. Now everyone thinks when they pee and they're peeing out the dye they see their pee is darker. Now, maybe they're dehydrated and so on and so forth. But this drug, if you can imagine milligram per kilogram body weight wise, it's so powerful and strong. And if any drug can cause cardio and renal damage, kidney damage, this is just more potent. So if you have the propensity for, for, for focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, that's the one that these guys have, FSGS. I've seen dozens of cases. I have dozens of men that are going into dialysis, at dialysis, and status post-dialysis, and they have transplants. It's not pretty. If you have genetics for this, you're going to push it hard with this drug. Be very careful. The last and amazing historical perspective of this drug has to come with the Trenkov. What's the Trenkov? Seems like guys tell me they inject different steroids, maybe testosterone, maybe primobolin, um, maybe, maybe uh, in, in, in Winstrol V, and they get a little, a little bit of a cough, but not much. The trend cough is a very cough, a deadly cough spasm. Please see my article on my website, metabolicandanabolicdoc.com, and you'll see the article page and I talk about a trend cough. And it's, it's amazing. So I did some research on this way back when I wrote this article, at least three years ago. What happens and what does the trend cough mediate through? No one really knows. There's been hypotheses that it's increase in uh, benzyl alcohol because they're mixing with benzyl alcohol. So that's the cough. And that's kind of the cough you can get when you inject any intermuscular steroid or testosterone. <clears throat> a little bit of a tickle cough. But that's the thing, it's a little bit of a tickle cough. And I don't know that this drug is cut with any stronger combination uh, or proportion of benzyl alcohol. I don't think so. So I think that's debunked. What we come down to is two things. There are prostaglandins in the body that are mediating and they have various effects on vasoconstriction, dilation, and downstream effects all throughout the body. Very complicated. There are inflammatory and vasoconstrictive smooth muscle which are in the lungs and also part of the, the upper airway region. Uh, and on the cough, there's, there's your, your cough um, uh, area that you have uh, in, in your body that is very, very sensitive, that protects you so you don't choke. It's a choking reflex. It's a cough reflex. 
So these prostaglandins are up, seem to be driven up immediately within seconds after administration and then circulation into your system. And that's one of the thoughts. And, and there's many bro science guys on this. And, you know, when you see this, you'll research, you'll see this is one of the hypotheses. And the other hypothesis is bradykinin. This is a inflammatory mediator, peptide, as we're talking about, that's, that's more specific than just a prostaglandin. It's a, it's a mediating inflammatory peptide. Now, we know as doctors, when we give someone an antihypertensive drug called an ACE inhibitor, they can get an ACE inhibitor cough. And it, it's, a, it's a tickle kind of cough. And it's a weaker type because it happens over weeks, maybe even to months. And then you stop it and you have to start a new, new drug. So this happens immediately. So you're going to see an increase in bradykinin. So that's it. That's the mediation and the explanation, if you will, of the trend cough. And with that, I conclude my presentation on Trenbolin, a monster steroid. Please, please don't use this drug. And if you do, please, please be careful and please come and see me for a consultation. Or please go see your doctor or someone you trust in the healthcare industry. Thank you so much. I really hope this helps everyone. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.